here at Phoenix Raceway, this time in advance of Saturday's Ticket Galaxy 200 with the NASCAR Xfinity Series. We are joined by Alex Bowman, driver of the number 42 Energize Ultimate Lithium Battery Chevrolet. Alex, you're looking to go two for two here with Chip Ganassi Racing this year and also trying to help the team uh, win an owner's title. Why don't you talk a little bit about that here at Phoenix? Yeah, absolutely. I'm ready to go. Um, obviously, Charlotte went really well. I'm just excited to be back in a car and especially at Phoenix. I feel like uh, we've run strong here in the past, obviously, and kind of never got the finishes we had hoped for. So um, I think we can have a, a really solid day. Really thankful for the opportunity that uh, CGR and everybody at the, the HMS engine shop and everybody at Energizer has given me. It's going to be a lot of fun. Awesome. We're going to open up to questions. We'll actually start up front here with Jim, and then we'll go to Jonathan. Jim Utter, Motorsport.com. I don't know how long you were in listening to Dale, but he was asked a question about some advice that he gave you and uh, one of the things that he said was that um, that he thought you in the last several years you raced so hard to try to prove yourself that he wanted you to realize that you made it and that it, you can try to enjoy what's coming uh, I just wondered can you talk a little bit about that about that advice yeah absolutely I think for a long time you know I whether it was my first year in the, the Nationwide Series, what's now the Xfinity Series, or my first couple of years in Cup, you know, if we weren't running well, I was pretty miserable and, and didn't have a lot of fun with it. Um, I just really felt like, especially that first year in the Nationwide Series, like I thought I needed to win races or, or I was failing, um, and I didn't have any fun at all. So kind of last year when I, I filled in for Dale, I had a blast. I, I That's like my goal every week was to have the most fun I possibly could and just to to enjoy it because I didn't know if I was going to get another opportunity like that. So I think I'm just going to carry that over to next year. So definitely uh, thankful for being able to lean on Dale and all his advice. But I mean, I, I really, um, even last year, was trying to just have as much fun as I can and enjoy it the most that I can. And that's, uh, that's definitely not going to stop. You're going to go to Jonathan? Jonathan Merriman, NASCAR.com. Alex, where did that chip come from and how early did that kind of develop in your, your personality? Was it, you know, when you were running asphalt midgets or, or was it when you made that transition and in, in running some cup races? Well, I think it really just came from winning my whole career and it coming really easy to me as far as winning races and then that all just stopping. In, in 2013 when I went nationwide racing, like the winning stopped, the it coming easy to me stopped, everything just kind of got really hard and um, it just kind of didn't go how I thought it would go. And from that point on, like, I worked with a couple people who kind of beat it in my, into my head that I, I wasn't very good. So that kind of just made me feel like I had to prove myself to, to people. So um, I think it, it came from a lot of that. And that's kind of what made me not have much fun for the next couple of years. But once I realized, like, hey, you're doing this opportunity, driving for the greatest race team in the garage, uh, you just need to have fun with it. So um, I think it just came from everything being so easy and then getting really difficult in a hurry. Do we have any additional questions for Alex? Up here to Dave. We'll get a microphone over to you. Dave Coleman, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Last year, the sort of here, the, the, the wave of emotions running up front, running really well, but then wrecking a leader how did that how did that play out um on your mind and how, how did you kind of get past that uh, discussion with matt that sort of thing yeah well i mean i think matt was the first person to say his spotter cleared him so i don't really think i drove down in the corner and wrecked him by any means um you know if uh i mean he i was on the bottom of the racetrack when we touched so I don't really think you can call that wrecking him, but uh, you know I've talked to Matt here and there since then. I think we're fine. Stuff happens. It's racing. Uh, there's, for me personally, there's no way out of that restart that goes well. If I don't block the inside, we're three wide getting in the corner, and I wreck Matt while we're still on the straightaway. If I block the inside, Kyle's got me way too deep into the corner. Probably going to get into Matt, but then Matt cleared himself, and we wrecked anyway. So. There's no good way out of that situation. Um, but you know, that race was uh, probably a turning point for my career, just to be able to, to show that we can contend for wins. We dominated all day and 
Um, honestly, anybody could have done it. You know, that was the race car was about perfect. Anybody could have gotten that thing and had the same result. So, um, very thankful for the opportunity to drive the, the 88 car last year and to have a race car that was that good. I mean, we were good all weekend. We made one run in final practice and parked it. So, uh, we, we knew what we had and, and we knew how, how capable the race car was. So, it was a lot of fun. Uh, obviously, I wish it would have gone differently and I wish. We wouldn't have had any trouble with Matt there at the end, but uh, it was a racing incident and, and stuff like that happens. Any final questions for Alex? You had one, Chris? Right up front. Chris Knight, Alex, so how, how was the Charlotte win as far as a confidence booster for you? And you feel like that you can go to Phoenix and, and do that again? And then what about Homestead? Are you racing anything or are you just going to be there in person? So the Charlotte win was great. Um, you know, I uh, I pay attention to things, and I saw plenty of people say that I didn't deserve the 88 car because I hadn't won a NASCAR race. So to kind of get that out of the way felt really good, and it had definitely bothered me. Um, the race last year here has bothered me for a long time just because we were so close, and especially to get a win in the in the Cup Series would have been great. But um, to kind of get that knocked out of the way felt uh, felt really good, and at the same time. It had been six months since I had been in a car, and there was a lot. Of, there was a part of me that's like, I, I hope I can still do this. Like, I hope I haven't lost anything. So it was a big confidence booster for me. Um, as far as going to Phoenix, I think we can do it again. Um, you know, I, I haven't run a short track all year, so there's that. But we tested here with a wheel force car in, in the beginning of the year, and um, this place has typically been pretty good to me. We just don't ever seem to get the finishes we deserve, but. I think everybody at CGR brings great race cars to the track, and we should be really good. As far as Homestead goes, I'm not running anything at Homestead. I don't even think I'm going to the race. I think I'm going to be sitting on the couch at home watching, but uh, it'll, uh, it'll be a good show, see who can bring, bring home a championship. All right, Alex, thanks for joining us. Good luck tomorrow.